Lee Brackley and uh, Polytechnic Institute in my youth days, um, 17. And um, just quickly, this is a cool photo in my opinion. Um, it's some autism abstract done by the Jacqueline Shashitz Moore of Yeti Coffee. So what is autism? Socially, autism can be not understanding what appropriate behavior for their age is. Mentally, autism is not understanding society's rules. Right. That is a child with the rest of their life. Finding already to be acceptable to watch at the age of 18 years old or 20 years old. Physically, autism is a fault because children are gaining lots of weight. Emotionally, they don't know how to express their feelings. So things like punching and biting can hurt their body because they don't know how to express themselves. And for example, um, if you say, oh, my grandmother just died, an autistic child can't say or laugh. Why? Because they're just happy for themselves. So this is it. Oh, that's wonderful. I saw him not that long ago. I got to start. So, in addition to the 110 children that are being diagnosed with autism, the ratio of girls to boys who have autism is one to four. So, boys have autism four times more than girls. So why focus on autism? Well, autism is interesting. You have your creative children that like to make different dolls and things. You have children that are so creative that they mentally are making up their own movies. You have children that like to draw and make their own tattoos. And then you just have children that like to run around. That's me and um, one of my kids at Keen. His name is Kavon. Uh, he has autism. And this is just an after session photo. <laughs> Having a lot of fun there. So, those affected by autism are not the same. By that, I mean that autism is, is an umbrella term because there are so many different things that go on with autism. You have classic autism, Asperger's syndrome, Brett syndrome, PDD, NLS, and childhood disintegrative disorder, meaning that one child who has autism may not act like another child that has autism also. And these disorders are also promoted, 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 which means that a child with Asperger's can have a disorder uh, symptom similar to PDD-NOS, or a child with heart syndrome can have an Asperger syndrome, you know, symptom. So autism is genetic. Um, so I've researched what genes are going on in autism, and this is just an example of how genetic it is. So here, both of the grandparents don't have symptoms of autism, but then their first and third son have symptoms, and from there, the grandchildren have, have autism. So it's just showing that autism can be a non-autism um, genetic disorder. So some common signs of autism. Social signs, not paying attention to what you say, not responding to their name, in their own little world. Verbal, not talking, or just not doing anything that seems to be normal, such as playing in the corner, looking at a car. Behavioral, when it comes to behavior, instead of just playing with the car and moving it around, they'll pick it up and focus on, say, just the movement of the wheel and the axle, which in a way is why lots of people like to say that autistic people are our future's engineers. Current treatments for autism, Grinisperol, that's a medication that helps with autism and the amount of serotonin produced in the brain. That is so that they can calm down or not focus so many so much onto one thing. Current behavioral treatments. The ABA, Applying Behavioral Analysis, which is teaching the child how to act in society. Right here, the therapist is working with the child, talking about how to act at home. And because the child is nonverbal, that's why you see these cards here. That is so that they can communicate. So this child most likely um, communicates through pets, which is a picture exchange communication system. So instead of saying, I want water and cake, we'll put a picture of I want water and cake, and that's how you understand. And with autism, the brains are actually bigger. So right here, this is the size of a normal child's brain. This is an autistic child's brain. Aren't you guys jealous? Their brains are in the 98th percentile at birth, and they're more dense and bigger than normal 
children's grains. Autism milk. So parents are assuming that milk is a variable in autism. They're thinking that it's making it worse. And after some review and actually watching the children at Keen, I can see that milk does worse in it, but I want to still find this out. So my hypothesis is that if milk does affect autism children differently than regular, it can probably be detected in their urine. So if proven correct, there might be an increased amount of case and orphans in a newborn's urine, and it might be a way of testing for autism. And this is great because if a child is autism, early intervention is really helpful. So autistic markers in urine. The peptide that I'm looking for would be case and orphans, and that could be found. Case and orphans are peptides created when a uh, protein and casein in milk is not fully broken down, and as a result, it acts like heroin on their brain. So my, my materials and methods, I use a computer, I use BLAST, which is a pairwise alignment system. So the idea is you'll take two genes and you want to compare um, sequences and see what's different. Plus, I love you, instead of doing pair, well, it does pairwise, but it does pairwise for multiple sequences, so five to eight would be an example of what you can do. NCBI website for providing me with all genes, and the Autism Genome Project for giving me autistic children's genes. So a way of creating new treatments for autism. So I studied bioinformatics. Now bioinformatics is basically a scientific field where you're using math and statistics and computer science to analyze DNA. So instead of working with test tubes, I'm working with computers and I'm analyzing. So some common examples would be genome assembly algorithms. So that's, for example, how BLAST scores, the scores how similar the genes are, sequence and alignment, so how they're aligned. Microbial array analysis, which is um, kind of having a human genome project onto a chip and keeping genes there, which is pretty cool. The chips are about like this big and they're white and in the middle there's like all the information. And then pathway analysis, which is showing you how the genes can be related. So if used correctly, um, bioinformatics can find genes that are damaged and help create new treatments for autism, whether it be medical or um, behavioral. So using bioinformatics to create therapies. So here I use BLAST, and these are some of the pictures that I just clicked out. And here, as you can see through the colors, that's just showing the uh, score. So this green color is, well, that's 40 to 80, which is, I mean 50 to 80, which is showing that it's not too similar, it's not too different, but here in these gapped areas, that means that there could be something going on here. And um, yesterday, while doing some work on Cytoscape, I actually found out that these two different genes for autism are related. So tomorrow when I go back, I plan to check it out and see how they're related. Because this one is for uh, Asperger's syndrome, and this one is for Brett syndrome, and I want to see how they're related. My conclusion is, theoretically, this can be correct. That's because um, case and organs are not water-soluble, so they would be able to uh, transfer, travel through the kidneys and into the bladder, where from there, we can possibly test it. But although the results show that autism can be detected in urine, it doesn't show that it can be worse. Therefore, further tests can be done. My next steps. After reducing blast and cross up, I plan to be taking a systems biology approach, which I have started. So I'm seeing the genes are related, which is awesome. And I already learned some Unix, which is the oldest operating system. It's a computer language. And instead of using a mouse the way you would hear, you would just type in things, and that's how you'd access it. And I plan to use Perl Basics. Perl Basics are, well, it's a computer language and you can do two things. So you can have a sequence and it'll and kind of now analyze it for you. And here on the bottom, I have a cladogram. So it's showing that these two genes are related, which ironically, the GI numbers show that those are the two genes I was looking at earlier. So hey, you might find some genes that are related. My future work. Um, after taking a system biology approach, I want to see how the genes interact. And after I work with milk, I want to see the other items that autistic parents, autism, parents of autism are thinking worse than autism, which would be soy, gluten, and corn. A lot of the parents with autistic children try to avoid soy, gluten, and corn, sugar, and milk. The reason for corn, milk, and sugar is because um, in autistic children's um, GI, their gut, they have a yeast growing there. So adding more sugar to it actually is going to worsen it and make their symptoms more prevalent. My references, more references, more references. Thank you to my professor, Miguel M. Gavin Brathwaite, Dr. Sack, Professor Ross, HDS staff, Polytechnic, my family, King New York for all the research I've done there, Yummy Coffee for helping me work with King, and all of y'all for all listening to this.
So any questions? By the way, another announcement. This Sunday, you have me coffee? We're going to be fundraising in New York. So if you guys want to come down to the South Street Seaport this Sunday from 12 to 6, we're fundraising. And all the money that you guys buy coffee with goes straight to Keene. And we can work with children that you just saw me holding in the picture. So do you guys want to help kids with special needs? Yeah. So any questions? Yes? Yeah, it's not. It's possible, but so far with the amount of concentrations, the idea is where can we go? Can we check with the pH? Can we make um, a protein that follows it? Right now, we're trying to figure out how we can find it. Casein orphans is the uh, product from the casein. The casein's in the milk, but that's what happens when it's not broken down the right way. So you guys, if you don't have autism, you can break it down. And it doesn't act like heroin on your brain. Any other questions? Well, that would be the used off part of it. The part that has the heroin that's acting on the brain is still being used on the brain. So, yeah. That's something I didn't actually study, but hopefully maybe next year, or once I'm done with this, I can study that. Oh, he asked, um, why are autistic children's brains bigger than normal children's? For that, I don't know yet. Um, I've kind of researched that after I've done this. But I think, kind of like, in a way, it might be bigger because their brains do a bit more than what we do. They're analyzing constantly. They don't stop thinking. We take, we have to take breaks. So, yeah. Oh, where did I read that they have uh, bigger brains? Well, I saw that um, on a few websites that um, are specifically for autism, so the Autism Genome website, and um, a photo on there that actually shows the difference. Any other questions? Sure, I, okay. yeah, I don't really study brains too much. <laughs> Anybody else, or is that it? All right.